another episode of the Cool Games. Let's go. Women's World Cup daily. <laughs> Just carried a little theme song. <laughs> okay, look at it that. It also sounds like it sounds like a 1940s car starting up <laughs> because my voice is shot. Yeah, we, shot, but... we were we were gonna spend uh we had the, the budget for the theme song for the Women's World Cup Daily Podcast <laughs> was about was about fifty five thousand dollars. And now mm. we don't even have to spend that money. Thank you, no, Alexis. No, you do because wait, you get my invoice, okay? <laughs> and that is going to cost you about fifty-four thousand. I left a little bit in there just for the for the home team. You feel me? Uh, what's good, everybody? Welcome to the Cooligans Women's World Cup Daily Podcast. My name is Christian Polanco. That's right, and I'm Alexis. Sounds like a bugle, Guerrero. <laughs> uh, let's go. Uh, we're excited about today's show because we have uh, incredible guests. Today, we're going to be joined by Angel City FC defender Paige Nielsen and also comedian Tien Tran, who uh, they both started a, a brand new show, brand new podcast called In These Cleats um, uh, about, you know, women's soccer, uh, the Women's World Cup, uh, and it's always great to see uh, more comedians uh, involved in the game. It's, it's uh, you know, a I beautiful think thing. We also, start- Paige Nielsen got some chops, man. She's kind of funny. Yeah, dude. yeah, she yeah. Can hold her own. It's a great. Uh, Can Tian Tran defend? You know, <laughs> <laughs> does the ratio qualify both ways? We gotta, we gotta, uh, you know, confirm. All right, we gotta get Paige, <laughs> Paige Nielsen at a comedy club performing, and mm-hmm. uh, we gotta get, uh, you know, Tian uh, Tran two footing her if she's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know, can Can Tian Tran playing a Challenge Cup match? I mean, let's yeah, see what man. you got. <laughs> so, Come on. Uh, hey, but they're the, giving out a couple contracts to fill in the spaces for some of these World Cup players. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but look, the the Women's World Cup. Uh, we had we had another uh, incredible match day, uh, match day four. Um, uh, the uh, yeah, shout out to everybody who also tuned in to uh, our U.S. Women's National Team coverage uh, and everything. We got a we a couple notes about that game after that, and we'll we can also look forward to to the next uh, U.S. game. But uh, the results. Today, um, we had Sweden uh, take on South Africa. Uh, they won two to one. The Netherlands defeated Portugal. Shout out to South Africa, though, who scored first, which was awesome. Shout yeah, out to South uh, Africa. S- S- Sweden uh, got uh, that, that late goal uh, to 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 win the game. So yeah, it definitely is, uh, some heartbreak for for South Africa. Yeah, it gotta be gut wrenching. Uh, Netherlands um, uh, one nil over po- Portugal and France uh, Jamaica uh, a nil nil draw which uh, I think that's where uh, where we should begin because yeah dude what an odd shouts to you for wearing a Jamaica kit yeah by the way. let's uh, go but what an odd thing to see France have a zero goal differential you know what I mean yeah not used to it and look it's a it's oh. a it's a strong team and, and we got the uh, the coach. Uh, uh, Herv Renard or Herr Renard? Yeah, Herv Ren- it's Erv. 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 <laughs> Renard. Yeah, yeah. I believe. Yeah, I my, hope I pronounced it correctly. My instinct is to roll my R's, but yeah. it's in French. The French, they don't have the, they don't have, they don't roll R's. They, they phlegm the R. They yeah. phlegm it. They, they <laughs> drink a little bit of milk before they say any R word. Uh, and also, uh, he's Harvey Renard now. Okay? Why are we doing this? <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, the, he was the coach of the Saudi Arabian team. Um, in, in the Argentina. In, yeah, in the, in the Men's World, in Cup. World Cup. And it was the um, – so he's just out at every World Cup. He's like, yo, I'm yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, literally just a he couple months ago. <laughs> <laughs> he walks in with his white dress shirt, two <laughs> buttons on button, and uh-huh. you can't say no. He's the coach now. Exactly. Uh, and and France, we all know, uh, and we we spoke about this before the tournament began. France had their, um, they all, a lot of the a lot, a lot of the players had protested and said that they were. Uh, not playing in the World Cup because of uh, of the coaching the the coach that they the had previous coach yeah and there were just a lot of issues uh, with well, I don't know just like the, just the working conditions were not great so the the team is in a little bit of disarray but now uh, and, and watching this game I, like I, I don't know if it's if it was France bad or was Jamaica good I, I mean and I want to give props to Jamaica because I really th- thought Jamaica played their play their asses off they yeah, defended yeah. gallantly. Yeah, uh, they defended well. Not, and not only that, but it just felt the 
and, and maybe this is we're finally seeing in this World Cup the 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 gap closing a little bit between these you know uh, big nations and smaller nations. The because Jamaica had like I mean we'll we'll talk about the the, the Bunny Shaw call in a little bit, but uh, Jamaica also pretty much all their players the the technical ability that we're seeing. Um, this time around, from some of the other Concacaf uh, nations on, on the women's side, is like they've they've leveled up a little bit. They they were getting around some of the 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 France uh, the the France uh, defenders, in, even in the midfield, just light touches to 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 get the ball away from uh, from from you know the the defender coming onto them. It was I was genuinely impressed where it wasn't they they, they weren't like overpowered by yeah you know, we know uh, Wendy Renard and 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 a lot of um a lot of the 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 I mean and this happens in a lot of the the, the world, women's World Cups where set pieces are really important because some teams I just have yes. large taller players and it is what it is right and I, I thought Jamaica handled it really really well France. Um, Obviously, they had some chances, and they hit the they hit the crossbar, uh, stuff like that. But just great game from Jamaica. I just especially as a, another Concacaf nation uh, in, involved. Um, you know, still. I mean, it was incredible. Their back line. They played a traditional four four two. They're like, look, we know who you are, France. Okay, mm -hmm. we've done our research. You seem pretty good. <laughs> we're gonna park this bus, and we're gonna try to hit you on the counter. But that's how you got to play when you have a player like Bunny Shaw. Yeah. She is absolutely incredible. She's lethal. So why not bank a little bit? And if you look at it, the whole left side played incredibly well. Uh, Brown, Samson, Blackwood, Swabby, absolutely incredible. Obviously, Spencer, the goalkeeper, played incredible. That whole left side played great, which is what you want because you want to be able to break out Bunny Shaw as well. She's obviously playing on the left side. Yeah, she. I love the there a was, little bit central as well. The, the, there was a, the, the the set piece uh, that that uh, Bunny Shaw went uh, direct and just uh, just took a shot on goal, and the and the the French keeper had to uh, do quite a bit. You know, had to really yeah. stretch uh, to stop the ball. Um, but the oh, yeah, overall, I just thought uh, uh, she had a great game. She played. Uh, aggressively uh but then that's where it, it kind of uh caught up to her because you she did, did too much you did <laughs> she got she got a second yellow well, she actually might not have done too much she might have not done anything on that second i mean one. you you think you would imagine if you're on a, a yellow where where the ball is the ball is uh, 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 just just over uh the touch just about to go over the touch line for you, people who don't know what we're talking about she slid tackled uh, Wendy Renard. The only yeah. problem is that tackle part didn't happen. She slid <laughs> in front of Wendy Renard, and Wendy Renard fell on her own, mm -hmm. and you know must have hurt herself on the way down because she was rolling. Yeah, and that you know the must have. She must have. Must have. She must <laughs> because she <laughs> definitely didn't get hit by Khadija <laughs> slash Bunny Shaw. Yeah. So uh, the ref gives Bunny Shaw her second yellow. It's the end of the match. What was it ninety plus two? It was almost pointless. It was like an absolute pointless yeah. time and place to do it. It was over by the touchline. Um, you didn't need to do it at all. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's like, I get that. Yeah, maybe you could, maybe you could, you know, fight this and get the red rescinded. Possible. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. I, but why slide yeah, at this time yeah. and place? Hey, even if you win, where... Even if you win the ball, like you're, it's, yeah. it's by the time it's probably just gonna go out. It's not. What'd you do? You yeah. do nothing if you win <laughs> yeah. the ball here. It's um, an unnecessary challenge and uh, just a bummer because she's she is arguably the most important player on the Jamaican team as far as like possibly getting a, a goal. To say that. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. To say that. I don't think it's a stretch to say she's probably the most essential player on this team. Yeah, because she is. She is the type of player that defenders have to keep in the back of their minds. So it's not like, oh, here's their striker. Everyone's like, that's Bunny Shaw. We need yeah, to yeah. focus on her, make sure she doesn't get open and get opportunities to score. Yeah, she got uh, she uh, got 12 goals in qualifying. So that's, yeah, I mean, obviously one of the better players. Yeah, in, she's, in the, a, she's in a big the, part of the reggae girl. Yeah. In the region. Um, so, uh, yeah, just a bummer because now um, their next game, uh, Jamaica's next game will be against... Uh, who they who they play next? It's either Jamaica uh, plays. It's either on, Brazil, right either Brazil or Panama. No, Panama, Panama. So Brazil plays Panama, I believe today, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, okay. Uh, or so in the Brazil's morning, next morning. Panama. Yeah, Tomorrow. and then yes. 
And then Jamaica plays Panama. Right, right, so right. Panama's rolling up to two L's. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Uh, uh, yeah, it's obviously Panama's first uh, World Cup uh, uh, as well. Happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. Just but but we haven't here. seen anything yet. We don't know what, what they're going to be like. But it's obviously uh, a, a tough team to play against uh, uh, against Brazil. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So that's uh, kind of where we are. The, uh, the other uh, uh, quick note. Um, we got the the what is it the stats or the the, the viewership numbers for the u.s uh, vietnam game uh which was cool to hear uh they, they did 5.2 uh they have 5.2 million uh viewers uh for this game uh so quite <laughs> quite i mean it's, it's the u.s women's national team um you know they're doing numbers okay it's uh you know what the streaming numbers are up. You feel me? <laughs> okay. The Spotify going crazy. <laughs> so, so uh, it, it is impressive. It does say there uh, it's up 99% from the USA Thailand uh, match in 2019. So, yeah, uh, just look the marketing department. You got to give props to the marketing department, uh, to to everybody, just to 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 the, to the players individually, building their own brands where people want to see uh, them uh, play more and more. I mean. Nike as well. I, I, I want to make sure I give uh, a, a shout out to uh, Lorena, Lorena Rusi, uh, the homie uh, who is yes. in. A, so if you've seen the Nike uh, ad where it's like a, a, a little girl w watching uh, soccer with her father and uh, and the father like falls down or something, he like hits his head. He ends up in like a coma. He wakes up, um, you know, whatever, 20 years later. And he's watching the 99ers. That's what it was. Watch the 99ers, and then wakes up, uh, you know, 24 years later uh, at the, the and, and now he's watching the Women's World Cup, and it's the little girl uh, is uh, the, the grown up, the adult version of this little girl is Lorena Rusi, who you've seen on our show. She's, uh, she's been on our show many times. Been on our show many she's times. Many inappropriate comments. On our show. <laughs> she's amazing. <laughs> she's a comedian and actress, uh, uh, and and also uh, a former uh, soccer player as well. And she is the absolute homie, and and to see her in such a huge Nike campaign uh, made me so so proud. It was so so great to see, and uh, yeah, it's just amazing. So happy that uh, you know again uh, another one of our comedy uh, peers are doing really big things in in the game. So uh, amazing to see. So look, uh, I'm just saying, just you know. Everybody, you know, even uh, we post stuff or or anything, you know, about women's soccer. People are just always, whatever. Nobody, nobody's gonna watch this. Nobody cares about women's sports. And it's like, ah, I don't know, bro. I, it seems like they're making a gang of money because a lot of people are watching. No, I mean, you know, people are watching. There's money to be made. And why, why, why would you sit there and say, well, I don't watch women for... Well, you might be the only <laughs> one, bro. <laughs> you know? Essentially, dog. Uh, it, it's a... You're missing out. I mean, there's no other way to put it. But, um, okay. So, um, uh, all right. Before we move on, obviously, just... In to, fact, those people, you know what they need to do? They need to chill. They need to desperately chill, bro. Wow, we, we, dog. We, That's what I say, bro. You need to chill, bro. I'm looking at the mountain on your... On your forehead, dog, and it ain't blue. <laughs> it okay? is. It's it's just a a, a straight, you know, a, just a dusty ass mountain, bro. That's bro, not... you got a dusty ass, <laughs> almost <laughs> invisible mountain, bro. <laughs> nah, let me slap a blue mountain on that head of yours so you can chill. And the way I'm gonna do that, I don't know if you know this, Christian. I just found this out. Your temperature is regulated by your digits, and I don't mean your phone number. You feel me? Okay. It's, the, it's your hands and your feet, your little fingers. <laughs> And your feet fingers. You know what I mean? That's, that's why right. wearing a glove. The, fi little the fingers of the feet, uh, as they say in yeah, Spanish. That's, it's Spanish. <laughs> um, direct, that's a Google translation. Uh, <laughs> you got to wear a glove in the winter so that you keep warmth in your hands. So if you hold something cold, mm -hmm. it makes you feel cold. So, oh, my God, if you need to chill on one of these hot days when you're watching League's Cup, what are you going to do? You're going to put something cold in your hand. Well, you don't want to grab any beer can. You want to grab one that's cold because it's got a blue mountain on it. You already know it's cold. So, therefore, by holding a can with a blue mountain, you will chill your digits, which internally chills you. And, in fact, you are perfectly chilled. Thank you, Coors Light. Shout out to Ice Cold Coors Light. That's the move. Okay, we all know. Uh, so, uh, the, the you know, Coors Light is the official uh, uh, beer sponsor for League's Cup 2023. And, and the matches have already been... Uh, 
uh, wild uh, this uh, just just a couple of messy yeah. free kick winner. What more you need to say? Leeds comes <laughs> clear. Dude, even the Philadelphia Union against uh, uh, Cholos was a, another a wild a game. Wild one. <laughs> uh, so entertaining stuff overall. So this summer, stay passionate and stay refreshed with a nice cold Coors Light, official beer of Leeds Cup 2023. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash Cooligans. That's right. That's CoorsLight.com slash Cooligans. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, all right. We have to go to our interview. Uh, seriously, uh, you know, uh, you know, we say this all the time. I mean, it's like if you want, uh, you know, comedy and soccer, this is the show for you and this is interview encapsulates that exactly uh page and tian are so so funny and we have such a uh just a great time riffing together uh i mean it's it's a this it's quite the 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 you know the the i don't know what voltron or power rangers joining forces or you know yeah, we page page introduces us a little bit into what the locker room is like and we introduce her a little bit into what a green room is like and the, when those merge it's quite a fun time exactly so uh uh here it is here's our interview with Paige nielsen and tian tran of the in the cleats podcast christian what in honor i heard a comedian is starting a soccer podcast <laughs> And I was like, yeah, we did that. And then it's another coming. I'm like, oh, thank God there's more. <laughs> okay, look, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. More people, you know, I, I we, we say this all the time. When we started this podcast, every all of our comedian peers were like, oh, you're doing comedy and you're starting a soccer podcast? Or what is it going to be, like three people listening at all? Right. This is this is how you know comedians are. They, 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 they offer no enco- encouragement, just simply roasting for whenever you have some kind of new idea. But now. All of a sudden, when all you know, soccer's picking up in this country, everybody's like, Yo, Christian Alexis, yo, what a great idea! What a great thing you yeah. did. <laughs> Do you know Messi yet? I'm like, No, uh, but the, one of the most important things is to see the women's side of the game grow as well. So, I'm really excited to bring these next two guests in the stars of In These Cleats podcast, comedian Tian Tran, and oh, come on, Angel City star. Everybody knows her, Paige Nielsen. Everybody, <laughs> good ladies. <laughs> and, oh. <Canadian. laughs> yes, yes. and i am not a soccer player <laughs> no. very very yeah. much an amateur soccer player okay yeah very yeah cool. i play i play in my you know co-ed sunday league that's as much uh, experience as i get when it comes to my athletic career uh but you know what i you know it's at the top of my resume i talk about it proudly yeah, and I bet no one else on that team has a podcast, so screw all of them. That's damn right. <laughs> so it, um, also visually, you can you know who's the comedian. We didn't have to say because you're holding a microphone. It's yeah, honestly yeah. a disease. Oh my god! <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's, <laughs> you know, I even have like a stand off to the side. I'm like, no nah. control, no yeah. control no. here. Is, <laughs> I can't do it. I need, I need, I need to grip it. That's why I like these things. I got nowhere to hold it. I need to have it touching my chin the whole time. You know, this is just... Oh, we call that the bar show syndrome. (laughs) That is... You ever go to a play... You ever go to a venue with, like, good microphones, you put it to your chin and speak, and you're like, that is way too loud. Yeah, that's way too (laughs) loud. Yeah, Yeah. you guys actually spent money on your AV. Wow. It needs... The the mic needs to have dents in uh, in it, you know, to know that it's... Like, the shape of someone else's chin has... Yes. Has left its imprint. All right, we're doing... And... And I will say this, Paige, I'm sure that there's sometimes you'll put on a boot and you could smell it and be like, oh, no, that's every comedy club microphone ever. Okay. I will not touch. I will not touch anyone else's cleats. Okay. Oh, I don't God, know I how you share mics. <laughs> I can only imagine. The first time comedy club microphones were washed was COVID. The first time in history. <laughs> okay. This is great. There's a, this is a lot of uh, inside baseball comedy <laughs> stuff for Paige. Uh, and for I want the Paige audience. to know how disgusting we all are. Yeah, we <laughs> really, right we're one. really gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, that's the thing. Comedy comedy clubs need like, uh, you know, like like football clubs have a have a kit person that handles all the all the equipment and everything. We need that desperately uh, for comedy clubs. But, <laughs> but okay. do you guys do snot rockets? That's the real question. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Only if the show's going badly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, somebody in the front row better be careful. You know? Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, let's get... 
the, the the women's World Cup and soccer. Uh, you guys started a uh, an awesome podcast in these cleats, uh, and uh, like we said, it's always uh, really exciting when, uh, especially from a, as comedians from a comedic perspective, perspective that people uh, are involved in the game. So this is great to see. So let's talk a little bit about how it began, uh, how how you two know each other, uh, how, how did how this all happen. A drunk bar fight. We were in the bar. No. <laughs> no. Paige uh, kicked it. my ass. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were fighting yeah. each other. <laughs> and then we became... No, no. Um, the Megawatt production company brought us together. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the producers were like, I, I love this comedian, Tian. She's going to be amazing. She barely made it to be one of my interviewees. And uh, she was finally our last one. And it was... Um, she was awesome, and we had such a great camaraderie between mm-hmm. the both of us, so it was really, really cool. And then it was history, and now we're best friends? I don't know. We yeah. have each other's backs. <laughs> <laughs> we, it's, 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 a page says uh, that I almost missed, only because I like wasn't in the country to like have this audition, but our one of the producers I used to write on a show with her, and we just turned like absolutely loved U.S. women's soccer. And I think we nerded out about it for a while. So when she said that she was doing a podcast with Angel City star Paige Nielsen, I was like trying to keep my cool when she asked me to uh, like audition for it. Um, Cause I love soccer players. <laughs> and, yeah. and like the first time I met Paige, I think I, I think I was like, Paige, I've never told you this. I was really trying to like not freak the fuck out so yeah yeah that's um, fair. It, so i kept it cool enough for our chemistry test and since then we've just been like hanging out and like talking to amazing players and like former players for the podcast and we have some cool interviews coming up where we have Ju- julie foudy sitting down with us next week so it's been it's been really really fun it's it's great, especially because uh, you know we say this all the time, and we've interviewed so many NWSL players, so many you know uh, players on other international teams, uh, and for whatever reason, I don't know what it is, but NWSL players and just women's soccer in general is we the, the personalities are generally better than men's soccer players. Just uh, there is something about the personality maturity he's he's speaking too lightly bro there men's players nine times out of ten are robots (laughs) have bits okay we love to hear it (laughs) yo i'm being serious like it's you know too much media training where i feel like even the women's players who get like a lot of media training as soon as they walk in they're like yeah forget everything i just i just learned let's have a good conversation yeah i know it's i just watched it's funny you say that because i watched the harry kane hot ones recently did you see that that dropped and i was like oh he's very charming and kind of a robot yeah 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 you're You're talking like a real estate agent trying to make (laughs) you move into a shoebox yeah i watched it it's charming i watched (laughs) it and i was like (laughs) i watched it and i was like ai is really going far these days this is pretty (laughs) cool Oh, good. <laughs> Bro. <That's> what, <laughs> but it, it is like, when, you know, when I, the first time, I mean, it, especially on the U.S. Women's National Team, the first time I met, like, Megan Rapino, that I, yeah, I felt kind of the same way. I was just like, this, how do I keep my cool? This yeah. is ridiculous. <laughs> how do you? You've met so many people now. Like, what do you two do to, like, I mean, stay uh, to, calm? I, I th- I think the, the the most interesting moment in uh, probably in our career was when we were we were hosting this event, um, uh, the, the uh, I, ICC Futures. It was like a, a youth tournament in in Bradenton, in Bradenton, Florida, uh, in the, at that academy, and we were in uh, like the green room with Samuel Eto, legendary oh ca- Cameroonian player, uh, obviously played at Barcelona. Leg- legend, everybody knows Samuel Eto. I played with him a few for years, but also in that room was Ali Krieger and Ashton Harris. Who did we speak to for an hour and a half and not speak to at all? Yeah. <laughs> we did not speak to Samuel Eto even <laughs> once, and we just spent the entire time laughing and having a great time with Ali and Ashlyn. Oh, <laughs> yep. God, I'm jealous. That sounds... That's a lesbian's dream right there, Christian. I'm sorry. That's hilarious. <laughs> okay. yeah. You just Samuel lived. Eto. We, didn't, we didn't order pizza. Get out of here. Get out. Get out. <laughs> Man, I have, I have been, I've like, I'm like, 
king lesbian. I don't know what it is. I'm, you I'm are. Honored. You, Christian, <laughs> yeah. you are an honorary king lesbian. <laughs> yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, uh, I'm you, sure TN and Paige were talking about that before. They got yeah. on. Oh, we are we were gonna like, meet with Alexis and King Lesbian? <laughs> I we're like, the in these, our I podcast, it. in these cleats, hands out King Lesbian honorary awards. And Christian, <laughs> you got the first one. Yeah, dude. I'm honored to be on the same podcast. As <laughs> uh, I, I think what, when you guys run your interviews, for us, we I, I would say we lean more on jokes. Mm-hmm. And the difference is we're both comedians. You guys have this really cool podcast where you get you know, the levity and the humor, but you also have like the player's perspective. But it seems from even just the clips that I saw that you guys had released, um, and especially that that sort of preview, you get a sense that like, yo, Paige also got chops, you know, when it comes to getting the bits in. Hell uh, yeah. You where, heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Where do you do you think and I want the question is for Paige, with everything I just said, do you think that the the essence of a locker room, do you think that the podcast you guys are hosting in these cleats is a little bit closer to that than most sports podcasts. Do you really think that as funny and and carefree and fun as you guys are in a locker room, do you think that's actually getting into the podcast? Um, I would say like 10% of it. Most of it's inappropriate. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. (laughs) Paige, what can we do to get that number higher? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Also, do it here. You're on with Alexis and King Lesbian. Let it out. I mean, drive shower radio show. We shower together. Like it's uh it's, it's a good really point. intimate, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um okay. Yeah, locker room talk. I mean, it's it's really cool to see you. Okay. Sorry one second. Oh. Um, so, uh, you know what? Are you Ace Ventura? Oh my goodness. What just happened? How many animals is that? <laughs> they just, you have a kennel in your home all of a sudden. I know. I know. <laughs> oh, it's adorable. How many animals do you have? I have two, but it sounded like Noah's Ark. I don't know. <laughs> no, yes, it did. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was I gave him a bully stick and hoping that wouldn't happen but we live on the first floor and dogs walk by our window this entire time uh, and my I, my wife has a bunch of work calls and I have podcasts and it's never it's never great. All good. We've do all- you know do you know what a bully stick is? Do you know what it's made out of? I just found this out. No. Um, what- I'm assu- I'm assuming crack cuz they love them. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a dehydrated bull penis. Wow. Is it really? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they, uh, they do make. Uh, they do I'm make speechless. Huge, <laughs> it's a stretched. Oh my! Penis. Just <laughs> one. <laughs> it's just, just one. Oh they do make all. They make alternatives because uh, this was a thing. Where I, my dog. <laughs> We were, uh, my wife. Your dog's like, no, 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 not bull penis <laughs> <Yeah>. for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, penises rather... aren't allowed in our house, so we have to get rid of <laughs> yeah. it now. That's why I brought it up. I'm like, hey, I don't know if you know. Get it out of but there. The only, one, the only one getting dick in that house. <laughs> 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 the, yeah, they make, al- they make alternatives that are not made out of uh, actual penis, uh, but that look that similar. That is crazy. Uh, yes, Yo, yes. When I found out, I was like, it can't be. And then some of them. You could still tell if you look closer. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh my, I'm not, I'm gonna go look at all the bully sticks now. Yeah, really, it's almost it's almost kismet when you see one just yamming on one. You're like, oh, that's, oh, that's painful. Oh my okay. gosh, I have no this idea. This is closer okay. to our locker room talk. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, there see, there we go. We've captured. We got it. the number up. We got the number up. <laughs> all right, all right. I want to. I don't even know where we were. How we have there, but the um. Uh, Paige, w- uh, when it comes to uh, a- uh, your, uh, your your time at Angel City now, obviously being an a- NWSL champion, uh, uh, and and now uh, I- I'm curious about this uh, this year in NWSL, especially with a-, a-, a World Cup. What what are the you know you've experienced this before? What is it like when when the when you're back after a World Cup? Uh, and and are, are there more fans? Is the fanfare like a little bit different? But like, what do these World Cups mean to NWSL and uh, and being a professional uh, in this country? 
Yeah, so in 2019, I was with Washington Spirit, and we had Rose LaBelle and Mal Pugh on our team during that time, and we that was the first time, really, we played at Audi Stadium, and um, we s- sold it out for both games, 20,000 fans, and that wasn't <laughs> even close to our other fan, like, we had 5,000 fans before that, and... Yeah, I think it's it's an incredible opportunity for more hype in women's soccer um, to get these people to games and to let them know that we have a professional league and that you can see all of these players weekly, not just at the World Cup. And I think that's so exciting. Yeah. Um, uh, hopefully players come back healthy and, mm. and, and ready to go for, for our teams, but it's it's a great opportunity for, for fans I'm, to I'm, see. I'm, Real quick, I, I'm sure you, you mentioned hopefully players come back healthy. What did you think when you heard about the England? I'm, I'm sorry, the the Ireland and Colombia friendly, where they had to abandon the game 20 minutes in because they were like getting too like Got violent, a little too sturdy, <laughs> <It's a little laughs> aggressive. Too. <laughs> but I would I, I, I would love to hear the answer from both of you. What what do you think about that? Um, I mean. You gotta like people have to know that teams are gonna bring everything they can at this at a world stage. Like you have to, you have to one prove that you you belong there. Otherwise, it's it's almost embarrassing. And two, yeah, it's intense. Even the the past games, um, I think Ashley Lawrence on Canada was getting roughed up in Canada. Right, right. <laughs> yesterday it was it's gonna be an intense tournament and um I mean injuries are part of the game but uh it's a lot of games in one month and um yeah I hope I hope coaches and teams manage players okay Um, yeah I mean I when I saw yeah when I saw that I was like get them off the field like if it's it is like (laughs) you know I think my like motherly instinct kicked in and I was like get those girls off the field like protect them for their big tournament but i get i mean i I get it that it's like you want everyone even in a send-off game to be going 100 percent because like that's how you get ready for these tournaments you can't be like playing at half speed and expect to turn it on right away once the like whistle blows for your first game so i mean i respect it like wanting to protect players but Paige, i see what you're saying like it's gonna be rough out there like get ready yeah, I, I think the, yeah. the story itself just highlights like, yo, this ain't this ain't a, like a quote unquote game. Like we out here to really like we we can hurt each other, uh, and and it just highlights the how competitive uh, it's getting World Cup after World Cup. Uh, uh, but yeah, Alexis, you had a question, right? Yeah, I was gonna ask Tian about you know being a fan though. You know, you're kind of now involved in a way in this Women's World Cup. For a lot of fans, you're gonna be a part of the voice of the women's world cup and especially during this time for us i remember how important it felt to just even be recognized or be a part of it or feel like we added anything to the culture you're a huge women's national team fan you get to be a part of it a little bit how does that feel that's got to feel incredible it feels oh thank you for asking it feels like it feels like a dream come true honestly i've been such a fan for a long time if there's any way that i have like a tiny little like participation in soccer in any way on like a public platform it feels so cool like when i told my family that i was getting to do this job they were like this is the best thing that's ever happened to you like better than any of the other accomplishments <laughs> that you've ever been a part of like this you've is got, the like, coolest awards thing behind yeah. you <laughs> yeah. like every other thing that's ever happened to you in your life means nothing this is it so it's been it's like very exciting and i also feel like you know, I'm sure you guys feel it too because you're watching all these games. Like, I don't want to miss anything. I want to be able to, like, talk to so much of what I didn't used to watch before, which was every other country. And now I'm, like, because of this job, even deeper in than I was before, just watching every other game besides the U.S. Women's National Team. Yeah. It's, it's a- yeah. I mean, I was talking about Germany the other day, and I'm like, yo, Lena Oberdorf, man, she's so good. <laughs> and I'm like, I caught myself. I'm like, my God, <laughs> have I really just learned so much? Because Christian and I have tried our hardest to make sure that we said we want to grow the sport. So we're going to talk about all mm-hmm. of it. And we talk about the women's game at the same amount and the same level we talk about the men's game because it should be. Anyone who kicks ball gets even 
even time on our show. And you just realize, like, I know backups on, like, the U-21 team <laughs> on some in some other country. I'm like, why do I know this? <laughs> okay. We're, uh, we're, yeah, we're, we're uh, deep in this game, you know. Uh, and it, yes. it's great to see. And, and uh, you know, uh, uh, like I said before, seeing people in comedy involved in the game, especially from where we, we started in 2015, and it, it was like, uh, you know, everybody was like, uh, you know, the, a lot of comedians are like, soccer is, you're going to talk about soccer, soccer is gay. And it's like, yes, it is. That's good. Yeah. More of it. Yes. Yes. More gay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, gay. it's also, it's also straight and it's also non-binary. Yes. It's everything. Baby. It's, it's everything. The best, it's the best, it's the best community. Oh. You know, and like just a little peek behind the scenes, like the, um, uh, the uh, producers involved in creating the show, uh, Becky Donahue and, and Mara Heron, who are uh, dear friends of mine, who, uh, you know, Becky Donahue reached out to me um, and, and she like, these are like big Big sisters in comedy. When I start, I started comedy in 2008. Uh, th those were the people that were had already been doing comedy like six, seven years. Uh, had a ton of respect for them. And then, you know, as soon as Becky reached out to me uh, and and you know and telling me about this project, I was really, really excited to get you guys on the show. So this is uh, really, really awesome. I'm, I'm happy for you guys. I can't wait to keep checking out the show. Um, and it, it's going to be available. Uh, how often? Where can people find it? Let, let, please let people know. Page. You got it, Okay, um, <laughs> you're sweetly holding your dog. Um, we drop, we yes. drop, <laughs> we drop episodes. This is like the cutest I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, we drop episodes every Wednesday, um, and we'll we'll be weekly. And you can find us on everywhere podcasts oh, are found, and also on YouTube as well. In these cleats um, on Instagram. So yeah, check us out. Yeah. Awesome. Who's your dream get? I want to get that from each of you before we go. Oh, Paige, who's yours? I know mine from the jump. Oh, okay. Gosh. Mine's Megan Rapino. I would like. I want to sit down with Pino so bad. Amazing. Um, yeah. I guess mine is Mia Hamm, but I think she would do it. Oh yeah. Oh. I think she. I, yeah, yeah. I feel like she's very. She owns. The yeah, team she's on the team. Play for. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. It's. Yeah, she would do it. She's a friend. She went to okay. UNC with yeah. me. I've I've hung out with her. She twice. would do it. Said, said two words, but we're friends. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She. Uh, but what are what a company what a company uh, player over here is like? Who do I want to talk to? My boss. <laughs> yeah, my boss. <laughs> that's my dream. <laughs> we uh, we had to interview Mia, but we had uh, before we started recording, we had mentioned that we we got to be at the reveal of the uh, of the the Angel City kit, the first Angel City kit, and we were. Uh, Angel City invited us um, to uh, Bank of California Stadium at the time, and we were in the room with Mia when the when the kit was revealed, and it was one of those moments of like, yo, we do not belong in the room with Mia Hamm. <laughs> yo. This kit is being real. like it's like it's like this must have been. I was like. <laughs> Does two other members of the Ham family want to be here? <laughs> no. <laughs> so we shouldn't be here. Uh, but no, the, both great, uh, both great guests. You know what? And I'm gonna, uh, so just so I can put this out publicly, because uh, our, one of our dream guests is Alexis Ohanian, one of the owners oh my of gosh, Angel City yes. FC, and we've been trying to get him on the show for years. Okay, let's, a good manif word, Paige. let's manifest yeah. all will, of that I for will. us. Yes, okay. the the meeting of the male Alexis. <laughs> yes. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> There's not that many of us. Uh, Paige, uh, Tien, uh, congratulations on the new project. Best of luck going forward. Seriously, uh, really excited to have you guys on the show. And you guys are welcome back anytime uh, you want to join yes. us. So, uh, Thank uh, you so yeah, much. And we'll have to have you two on our show, too, if you would. Yeah. I mean, oh. like, that would be the best. You're my dream get. Oh, yeah, you are. Okay. Make sure that lesbian. you're really good King at lesbian, already. you have to come <laughs> on to our show. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the title card under my uh, and bully me bully stick say. expert, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, petrified bale of bull penis and king lesbian coming on the next episode. I was <laughs> sure that she was no. gay, and now I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, cheers, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Another wonderful interview by us. I mean, <laughs> the reviews are in. We, Alexa. Are, <laughs> we are so good at this. Uh, uh, no, uh, shout out to uh, uh, Paige and Tien. Of course. Uh, go check They're out incredible. In These Cleats, uh, available every Wednesday. And yeah, I'm, I, I mentioned it in, in the interview, but, uh, you know, there, there's comedians that are involved in the production of the show uh, as well. So it's always exciting to see uh, our peers 
members uh, also involved in the game. With it's grown. The, the, all right, the Cooligans effect is real. Okay, mm -hmm. everybody sees this the cash cow that we've yes. created. Okay, <laughs> we in 2015 we opened the door and waited seven to eight years before other people started to walk through that door. <laughs> right. Okay. They saw you know all the the, the life of luxury that we live. Yes. And they're uh, like, we got, we got to get on board. <laughs> Are they on Spirit Airlines? We've got to get in this game. <laughs> okay, because I'm still on a horse and buggy. All right? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bro. My cousin just died a distance. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate uh, the support, uh, the listeners, all the positive uh, uh, comments and things like that. Uh, leave a review on Apple Podcasts. You can also leave a review uh, on Spotify. That's a new little feature that uh, at the bottom. It says, uh, how'd you like this show? Show, let them know you like this show hey, okay loved it <laughs> so uh give us five stars subscribe to the youtube channel uh as well uh and shout out to everybody here watching on DraftKings network we appreciate you and we will be back tomorrow with another banger for the women's world cup daily podcast let's go peace